Today we're going to talk about how to install the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, otherwise known as CM4. So this one is unique in that it has eMMC, which is embedded multimedia memory. So it's like a hard drive. So to install this, it's slightly different. You're going to do the normal connection like you normally would. You're going to also do your Wi-Fi antenna. But what we need to do on the Manta M4P is actually move over these dip switches for three and four. So I'm going to take this one, click it over, and then do the other one. Then what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to connect our USB to it. So you're going to hear a ding as if the computer's connecting. Then we're going to go over to the desktop. And on the desktop, I'm going to have to show you a couple of things real quick. So the first thing I want to show you on the desktop is the actual manual. The install that I recommend at the moment is Fluid. So I'll walk you through that. I've already opened the web page for this, but we also need the RPI boot, which is on page 21, I think. And if you place this link in your web browser, it will download the program for you that you can then run to connect to your Raspberry Pi. So if I were to copy it like so, go over to the browser, pick a, page and paste and hit enter it will download right here then you can install the executable but I already have it installed so I'm going to run it right here and essentially this is running a binary to set up the connection so that we can see it down in here so there's our boot drive so now we can see it I already have an install on here but I've already downloaded up above the actual fluid pi and extracted it as you can see. So I'm going to go over to Raspberry Pi Imager and as you can see I already have it selected. So I'm going to choose the storage device which is the CM4 module and then I'm going to click write. This is going to take several minutes so I'm going to pause the video and then I'll come back and explain the rest. Okay, as you can see, it's almost completed verifying. It loaded just a second ago the actual image. So we'll give this a second to pop. And it looks like it's almost done. So we're going to click continue. Now, in order to actually load the actual settings for your Wi-Fi network, what you need to do is go back over to your desktop, turn off the actual connection, now we have to reconnect again and run the RPI. So let's go back over to the computer. And on the computer, we'll click on RPI boot. We'll give this a second to actually register down in here. So we'll see it in a second. And there it is. So we're going to go to the boot drive. And then we're going to look for the supplicant for Fluid Pi WPA supplicant. So you'll right click, you'll then open with Notepad. And let me bring this over so you can see it. So this is our actual configuration right here. It's just like the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to remove these hashes right here so we can uncomment. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put in the password to your router down here and the router name up here. So I'll do this off camera, save it, and then we'll go over to the router and see what it looks like. Okay, before we actually go over to the computer, now that we've changed the uh, router name and saved it in the file with the password, we need to disconnect this. Then we need to pop these over back to the position that they were in before we started so they're all in a line now we can plug this in and then we'll go back to the router so if we go over to the computer now obviously there's a clipper install that we're going to have to address in a moment now i'm going to blank out 
obviously what the router name is and password up in here. So what we'll do for now is we'll go to connected devices. This may boot rather quick. I'm not sure, but we'll see the actual Raspberry Pi or excuse me, the uh, Fluid Pi show up in here. So let's give this a second more and try another refresh and see if it's actually here yet. There it is. So we're going to take this address. We're going to copy it. In this case, 192.168.1.4. And we're going to go over here and we're going to paste that address. This may take a second to actually load. Okay, it took a little bit longer than I anticipated, so I rebooted the Manta, and uh, then it came up after a couple of moments. So, let's move on to the next portion. So right here, it says that it doesn't have a config file. So in order to do that, we have to set up the actual config file. So if you scroll down through here, you'll see configuration, then inside here you'll see, let's see, fluid config. Let's take a look at this real quick. So inside here it's pointing to a couple of things. So these are some of the parts that we would normally use in our printer config. So we might be able to copy these, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the actual downloads folder and we're gonna copy out the config and see if we can put that in here and save some time. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna see first if I don't have to create a file by just copying it over. So we'll go into the Manta M4P folder, go to firmware, clipper, and then we have our generic one right here. So we'll copy this over and it looked like it copied. So we'll right click and see if we can rename it. And we'll call this printer config. And then we'll hit enter. Now what we'll try and do is restart, see what happens. Now it says that there's another issue, printer is not ready. What that means is it doesn't know what to connect to. So we're gonna have to go over here. So we're gonna have to use the IP address that we have up here to connect again. So it's 192.168.1.4 in this case. So up here, I'll do Interraterm new connection. I'll call this 192.168.1.4. It's port 22, it's SSH, which is secure shell. And then we'll say, okay. So this should bring up after we say continue our environment. So the password for this is gonna be pi and then raspberry and then OK. So what we need to derive from this is the actual connection because we've loaded the firmware in previous tutorials. So I'm going to go over to the install over here and I'm going to find where to list it, which is right here. So I'll copy this. This is ls. This is a directory being dev, serial, then by ID and anything that's in there. So let's right click, hit enter, and that's our connection for our MCU, which we need. So I'm gonna right click and copy that. Then I'm going to minimize this, go back over to the connection that we have for FluidPi. I'm gonna click on configuration, and I'm gonna scroll down and look for the MCU. So here it is. So I'm gonna type serial, then I'm gonna say colon, and paste it. So this one is a default one that was in there, so I'm just gonna take that out. And then I'm gonna click Save. Now what I'll do is I'll go back over to, after a save and restart, back over here to see what's going on. Now it says there's another issue. So ADC out of range, that has to do with the thermistors. So let's go back over to the desk for a moment. I'm going to plug in the thermistors. Now normally you would do this with the board powered down, but I've done it before. 
and obviously we're running just five volts. So these are the two thermistor ports and these are the thermistors that I'm using for now, just so you can see how it works. So let's go back over to the computer. Let's try a restart of Clipper. Now it seems like uh, we're still having an issue, so let's try firmware restart. If that doesn't work, we'll have to reboot, but now we have all these issues. So it did work, but we don't have this. So what you need to do is kind of simple. You can go down to here, and where you see this fluid configuration, you can actually just copy these in. So I think it's these three, so let's just copy. Well, you're going to have to do it with a control C apparently. Then we'll exit and we'll go to printer config and at the very top, we'll hit control V. Then we'll save out of this and restart and see if that issue goes away. Okay. So we still need to do the cancel print macro. So if we go over to here, and we look at the cancel print, this is going to have to be copied and pasted in as well. So we'll copy that. We'll go back over to our configuration file, which is down here, and we'll paste it right here and save and restart. Now there's gonna be one more issue, and that has to do with uh, the actual permissions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can find this issue. So Moonraker is not found. So we need to do something over here. And I believe this is done in ASCII, which is going to be in our TerraTerm session. So let me clear this out real quick. I'll just hit enter. It won't know what I'm talking about. Then I'll right click and I'm going to paste these commands. Then I'll hit enter on the last one. And our admin password is rasp very, and then enter. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll go back over to our environment again, which is hopefully still up. Here it is. So let's try to do a reconnect. So I'm having an issue, so we're going to do a force refresh. We may have to reboot, but let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to do a reboot real quick. And so I just clicked the reconnect, and now we're able to actually see our environment. So as you can see over here, our thermistors are fixed, but let's test them real quick to see if they're working. So if I go over to the desktop, and I place this between my finger and my thumb and then go back over to the desktop, you can see that the temperature is rising. So we know that now is working. Now other things that will be configured in your configuration I will show in future tutorials. At this point though I want to thank my patrons and the people on PayPal as well. I'll put a thank you note in the end and also Big Tree Tech did provide the board for the Manta C4, or excuse me, the Manta M4P. And I'm grateful for that. The Raspberry Pi CM4 module with the EMMC is mine. But uh, at this point, I'd just like to thank you for taking the time to watch and please like and subscribe.